Today I want to expose the hidden cults in America. And there are a lot of them. What in the world is a cult? Well, there's three basic tenets to a cult. And when you understand them, you can look around and you can see cults. And then you'll say, well, that's not, that's not right. That's a cult. That's not right. So what's the first tenet? They're exclusive. Exclusive means they exclude. Other words, they, they may say something like, we're the only ones with this truth. Everyone else is wrong. And if you leave our group, you're going to lose your salvation. You're really in danger. You can't afford to go over there with anybody else because we're the only ones that have the truth. It's a lie. It's not true. Father doesn't just give the truth to a person. He gives the truth to people. What's the second tenet? Secretive. Ah, we're a secret organization. Certain teachings are not available to any outsiders, and they're only presented to certain members, the special few. Sometimes after taking vows of confidentiality. What a crock! What a crock! There is nothing hidden. Father said in the end there'll be nothing hidden under the sun. Everything's going to be exposed. Look what's happening with the elections right now. Everything is getting exposed. Well, everything is going to get exposed in the cults. And this is part of that movement. And what's the third tenet? Authoritarian. A human leader expects everyone to be totally loyal with unquestioned obedience to that person. Man or woman, doesn't matter. We are, we are the leader. You don't do anything unless you get our permission. Total baloney. Total baloney. Where did the where, where did this the origin the origin of the word cult come from? Well, it came from the French and the Latin. It came from to inhabited or cultivated or worshipped. Now, worship is a wonderful thing if we worship our Creator, we worship His Son Yeshua. What a wonderful thing! And and Father even sent us a helpmate, Holy Spirit, to help us worship Him and to help us. Lift up the name of Yeshua. So that, but there, that Holy Spirit is available to everyone. One of my good friends says something to me the other day. He said, "Not everybody can get the gift of tongues." Another baloney. That's baloney. The gifts are for every believer. Every believer, and, and it's really important that if you don't have your tongues, you need to go to drpatricia dot dot org, and watch the videos and get the get the get your tongues. Because your tongues are allowing him to speak through your mouth back to him so he gets perfect prayers. I mean, it's really important. And the more you pray in your, in your prayer language, your tongues, the more revelation you'll get. So what is this? What is a cult system? A cult system is a system that lifts up a person and that person is the leader and that person has total authority, total authority. And they're the only ones that have this. And it, and you have to keep it a secret because we don't want anybody to know that they're the only ones because they'll get lifted up even higher. And they are the final authority. Look around you. Just look around you and see what, see what places you can find that fit this model. You know, many, many religious organizations are led by pastors who are followed instead of the congregation following Messiah. Well, why don't they follow Messiah? Follow Messiah, because the pastor has not been equipping them. Well, what's the job of the pastor? Well, the pastor is the shepherd, and the shepherd is to lead the sheep. Now, see, my people came from the Viking groups, and we did a terrible thing to the to the sheep. We brought in dogs to drive the sheep. Well, back in the days of Yeshua, Jesus, back in the days of Christ, shepherds didn't drive their sheep. They spoke and the sheep followed them. So the sheep followed the shepherd. They weren't driven. Well, today you go into most of, these, most of these places of worship that I go into, and the pastor is driving the cats. I mean, driving the sheep. You can't drive cats any more than you can drive a congregation. We're supposed to lead by example. And if I'm going to be your pastor, your teacher, then I should say, don't do what I say, do what I do. And if I'm not doing right, I'm not worthy of the calling. And look around you. Look around you. So where does this, where did this religious thing that we have today come from? 
Well, I mean, it was, it was, we had the Dark Ages, and some of you know about those. That was back when nobody was allowed to read the Bible because, again, it was secretive, and it was exclusive, and it was authoritarian. It was a cult, and the cult was called Catholicism. And Catholicism didn't allow people to read the Bible. Now, the people of Islam called the Jews the people of the book. Well, the book they're talking about is the Bible. That's the book. Now, if you don't know what's in the book or the Bible, how do you know that the person up there in front of the congregation is telling the truth? Well, I'm going to give you the obvious answer. You don't. And if he happens to be a liar or he's misinformed or he's deceived, guess what you're going to be when you're sitting in front of him? You're going to be listening to a liar or you're going to be deceived because he's deceived. So how do you know what the truth is? The, the word says, the Bible says, and the truth shall set you free. Well, where do you find the truth? You find it in the book. What is the book? The book is the Bible. So you need to read it for yourself. So let me, let me give you a few, a, few, a few scriptures. And I want you to go back in the book and check me out. See if I'm right or wrong. Matthew 23, 8. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all the brethren. And you all are brethren. Well, we don't call anybody rabbi because the book says, the book says don't do that. And that was out of Yeshua's own mouth. Matthew 23, 9, he says, And call no man father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. If you go to one of these religious places and they call the priest father, stop it. He's not your father. You have one father. Your father in heaven. So, you know, a lot of people, two couples that we ordained, one of them wanted to have a Bible study in their home. And they went and they talked to the pastor, and they said, would it be okay if we had a Bible study? He said, no. Give me a break. Give me a break. Somebody's going to tell you not to share Christ. They have authority over you. Well, there's this big lie. You have to be under a covering of a person. It's a lie. You're covered by the blood of Christ. You don't need a covering of a person. How's that? Are you going to let somebody be between you and and God? Are you going to do that? I'm not me, because you and I are are allowed to have a personal, intimate relationship directly with our Father through Christ. Directly. There's nobody comes between me and my Father. Nobody. My Father being the Father in heaven. Nobody. So don't don't fall into that lie. Don't don't let somebody tell you you can or you can't that they have authority over what you do because they're liars. They don't. They just want you to think they do. And sadly, most of the time, it's for bucks. Because if they lose you from the congregation, there goes your tithe. There goes your money. And sadly, the majority of the people that I meet that are in the position of pastor in mainline demon na- I mean denominations, not, I call them demon nations because every one of them is a way to divide the body of Christ into parts. You know... I, I, I'm thinking of a young man who, who was became a fireball before he died. He got into Satanism big time. He was a high priest in Satanism. Because when he was a young man, he was going to a church. And I don't know which demon nation it was. but I, 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 not, It seems to me it was Baptist. But he went to his pastor and he said, You know, God's talking to me. And the pastor said to him, God doesn't talk to people anymore today. That was Satan talking to you. And he thought about it for a while. You know what he did? He went and joined a coven of witches and got into witchcraft. And when he finally got to the truth, you know what happened? He got set free and he led lots of witches and warlocks to Christ. Because Christ talks to us today. Because he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Christ said that. I didn't say that. Yeshua, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice in the book of John, the 10th chapter, 27th verse. If he said it, it is. That's what it is. Now, how do I know he talks to people today? Because he talks to me all the time. He talks to Patricia all the time. Everybody in our ministry hears his voice. Now, here's what I do. When I first, when I first really wanted to get his voice accentuated, I wanted to hear it louder. I wanted to hear it clear. I would sit in a straight chair, and I would say, Yeshua, Yeshua. Yeshua, sometimes 15 or 20 minutes. Then I would sing it, 
Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. And I was calling upon his name. Because I, I remember in Romans 10, 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, if, if, if he's big enough to save me, he's big enough to talk to me, and I can hear his voice. So I started calling on his name, and guess what? It got louder and louder and louder. And he talks to me all the time. Now, we have a conversation. See, a, a prayer is not, a God, give me this, and God, give me that, and God, do this, and God, do that. It's not what a prayer is. A prayer is a conversation. Lord, I'd sure like to know, no, no, have an answer to that question. Well, here's your answer, Will. Well, thank you, Lord. Now, what do I do with the answer that you just gave me? Because we have a conversation. Now, is it audible? I've only audibly heard him twice. I've only heard him twice audibly. And it was just like he was standing right next to me talking into my ear. But for the rest of the time, 44 years worth, I hear it in my spirit. And you're going to hear him in your spirit. And how do you test it to make sure that's, that's what, what he said and what he wants you to do? Well, I have my own little system because I want three confirmations. If he tells me to do something, I want it to be confirmed three times. It's like investments. I, I went to invest in something, and I said, Lord, can I have some of that? And he said, nope. And I asked him again. He said, nope. And I asked him a third time. He said, nope. That was fine. The answer was, nope. You can't do that. Another time, I wanted to get into an investment, and I said, Father, can I do that? He said, yep. I said, well, I prayed a little while. I said, Father, are you sure it's okay if I do that? Yep. Finally, I said, Father, you know, I don't want to make any mistakes if I do this. Is it okay if I do that, make this investment? He said, yep. And that's what I do. In fact, it even happened when I first met, first, first time Patricia and I went out and ministered together. I said, Lord, I'm not sure you want me to go all the way from Virginia to Pennsylvania to minister with her. So I need three confirmations. So I'm going to ask her three questions. And if she answers any one of them, no, I'm not going. And I called her and asked her three questions. She said, yep, yep, yep. And I went to Pennsylvania. And we went and ministered to a couple. And we saw some autistic children get free of autism. But you see, we can, we can reason with Father. He said, come reason with me. Don't just jump to conclusions. Just if you hear something, it doesn't quite sound right, doesn't feel right. Probably not right. So get some confirmations. Now, you know... The beginning of knowledge is what? The fear of the Lord. And where do you get the fear of the Lord? Well, it's one of his seven spirits. And if you go to Isaiah, the 11th chapter, the second verse, there are seven spirits that, that came upon Yeshua, Jesus, seven spirits that rested upon him, and the same seven spirits can rest upon you. And the, and the last of the seven is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Well, why, what is, what is, why would I be afraid of Father? That's not what it means. It means reverence. It means to revere Him. You know, he's the only reverend in our life. We don't have reverence in the pulpit. We have the revered one. He's the one. We revere Him. And Yeshua said, Don't pray to me. Pray to the Father. But how do we get to the Father? Well, we don't, have a, we don't have a direct access to Father because of the imperfections that we have. Our, our righteousness is a, as a filthy rags. So we have to walk, go through the Christ, through His righteousness, to get to the Father. So, in the name, Father, in the name of your Son, Yeshua, I come before you and I have this petition for you. Well, what allows me into the throne room? Yeshua, He allows me in because He is the door into the throne room. There's no other name. There's no other name above any name in the whole universe. The highest, most sacred, sanctified name in the universe is Yahshua. Now, it's not Jesus and some other teachings I've told you that Jesus is a transliteration. It's a made-up name that was made up by the Greeks that glorifies Zeus, their god. It's a made-up name. His name is Yahshua. That's his birth name. And so if you really want to get, seek him and get close to him, it'd be kind of, kind of cool if he just called him by his real name because he was a young Jewish fellow, you know. He was a Hebrew. He was of the seed of Abraham. His name is Yahshua.
So let's see. I'm not going to go real far with this thing. Uh, but I know one thing. You, you cannot please Father unless you accept the fact. Oh, this is a good one. Let me, let me share this with you. But Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Father is a rewarder. I could tell you stories that go on for hours and hours about how much Patricia and I have his favor. It's rewards, his favor. Something will happen and Father just does something and we know it's him because it's, it's just, you know, it, it's not coincidence, it's Father. And he's always looking out for us. He looks out for me and I'm going to tell you something. If I was him, I wouldn't have chose me. I'd have found somebody better. And my goal in life is to be a nobody so that he can be everything. You see, if I'm something, he can't be everything. But if I'm nothing, he can be everything. So one other couple that we should, they have a singing group and we ordained them and they got hooked up to a cult and they, 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 they helped the cult grow their music ministry and they wanted to go off on their own and their pastor said, you can't do that. You didn't have my permission. Well, if you have to get permission from a pastor to go out and do the work of the Lord, get out of there. Now, I'm going to do a whole video on how to, to do home Bible studies, but you can't call them Bible studies because in the state of Colorado and the state of Virginia, the zoning people will come down and shut you down. You have to call them family gatherings. And so as, as we grow in this, I'm going to do a whole series on how to start a family gathering in your home so that you can get in the book, the Bible, and you can start taking it chapter and verse and you can get a group of friends together and you can open that up and you can read it together and you can pray about that for a week and get divine revelation from Father. You know, the fastest growing church in the world and the, the Christian church in the world is in China of all places. And it's growing house to house because they don't have any buildings because they don't allow them to. They're only allowed to have 26 people in a meeting. If they have 27, they go to prison. I know, I spent time in China. They're only allowed to have 26 people in a meeting. So they get, they get a, 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 a gathering put together and they start sharing Christ. And when they get to 23 or 24, they split and they make two meetings and they grow again and again and again. You know, Dr. Cho in South Korea has the largest congregation in the world, over 3 million people. But, but they're only allowed to come to the meeting in the building once a month because they, they can't fit them all in. There's 3 million of them. So where do they meet? They meet in homes. Well, if you really want to grow, you become the teacher. Because if you start teaching and people ask you questions, it forces you to go find the answer in the book. Now, you know what book I'm talking about, right? You know what book, right? It's the Word, the Word of God, the Word of the living God, the Word of Yahweh. So I'm going to leave you with this. Look around. If you're involved in a cult, get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Find some place that's not a cult. Find some place that you're being empowered, you're strengthened, you're being sent out to be a worker. Because Father needs workers in the field bringing in the harvest. And the harvest is souls that are hungry for Him. And they just need somebody like you to say, Hey, you know what? God loves you. He loves you. And let me tell you about His Son. Okay? Go get it.